Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to Let's Try Pinbology. Pinbology is a game I made in 48 hours for a competition called Ludumdare, or Ludumdare, depending on how you want to say it. I made literally 48 hours. At 9 p.m. on Friday night, we got a theme announced. The theme was Evolution, and we had 48 hours. I had until 9 p.m. Sunday night to finish this game from scratch. It's an insanely cool, fun, crazy kind of competition and I love to do it and I live stream the whole thing and this is the game I ended up with. I decided to make a pinball game based on evolution. And uh, I'm gonna play a couple of rounds here and we'll take a look. Um, and there, will, there will be a link in the description down below where you can see my entry page and you can also uh, download the game and play it. So um, it is a very physically realistic game. Um, Wow, it's gonna be hard to talk and concentrate on this. Um, what I really, I actually have a love for pinball machines. When I go to arcades, playing pinball is one of the favorite things I like to do. I mean, most people like to play the sort of start standard cabinet games, you know, they'll go for the fighting games, the racing games, or this and that. I have a special love for pinball, and I always have, and I think a lot of it actually has to do with one day, my, blah. My dad brought back, a uh, when I was quite young, a, uh, a pinball machine from somewhere at auction or something. I don't know how he got it. Yard sale? I have no idea. But he ended up bringing a pinball machine home. And we had this thing in our basement. And it was amazing. I mean, first of all, it was so cool that... Uh, ah, uh, if you saw the screen shake, that's the, the tilt function. Um, it was so cool that we had a pinball machine in our house. I mean, that's the sort of thing you only, you know, you paid a quarter for to play. Um, and uh, we played a lot, but also it was really cool that um, it wasn't locked, right? So, I mean, we didn't have to put in quarters. We just opened up the front and there was a manual sort of button that we could push. Well, I actually got on the high scores table. Wow. Um, that, um, that, that gave us extra, extra plays. Um, that was the only way we could do it, is like literally opening up the front and hitting hitting the same switch that a quarter would hit if we put it in the slot. Uh, and then we'd get, ah, no, we'd, uh, we'd get to play. So we could play all day on this thing. And the thing is, I found out then that like, oh, pinball is actually, like these pinball machines are quite complex. They, they have a series of moves you have to execute to, uh, you know, they call them objectives. Urgh! Oh, damn it. I have the, uh, the flipper set exactly right so that you can actually trap the ball between them, assuming it's coming in at the right angle and not too fast. And then you have to tilt the table just, just right to get out of there. It's like an advanced trick. And that's the thing, pinball is serious business. People have all kinds of really advanced tricks um, to do things, including like tilting. Tilting's, or it, nudging the table, I suppose, is a, is a legit move. Ah, oh, damn it. Um, to uh, stop the ball from going into, you know, like an instant death sort of alleyway type thing. Um, and uh, or let's see if we can do it this time. There we go. Jam it out of there. Um, and so, yeah, I've got a system that you can, uh, you can, if your timing is just right, you can save a ball that's going down the middle. And I like adding that sort of... Um, that sort of thing, because the table is actually much simpler than most modern tables. My goal here was actually to create, uh, replicate the functions that you would see in a electromechanical pinball machine table, which is ah, uh, which is um, the quite the old school one before they came out with solid state circuits, like before real circuit boards. This is very, you know, like electricians would put these things together as opposed to to programmers or, or things like that. Ugh. God, I'm so failed tonight. Um, and so my goal was to try to simulate that. Oh, cool! I got it in the uh, the ball lock. There's no delay on it, and no like little pop-ups to let you know that it happened. So it looks kind of odd, I know. But if I can get three balls in there, then I can activate the multi-ball. And anyway, so I have a love for pinball machines. Now, the theme for the competition was evolution, but my goal this time around was first and foremost I want to make. Damn it! A fun game, a game that like that felt good. Um, and then you worry about the actual theme second. And and I didn't want to bust my balls, especially with something like Evolution, which I done in the warm up, uh, sort of on my own incentive. Um, I'd known that. I'm just gonna tilt out of this game and restart. 
um, I knew that like trying to base a game around the mechanics of evolution was going to suck. It was going to be something really contrived. It was like, oh, you make a game where you like, you know, you can unlock talents that give you special abilities. Well, how is that different from anything? You know, oh, Skyrim all of a sudden is a game about evolution. World of Warcraft is a game about evolution. Freaking Starcraft is a game about evolution. Well, it's not really. And I, I find that, like those applications of the theme end up being kind of weak and generic and predictable. Um, so what I wanted to do instead was make a game that was like, okay, we're going to use something that's totally standard gameplay. You know, a, a tower defense game, a pawn game, or I ended up doing a pinball game. Um, and then I was going to flavor text everything with evolution. And pinball is really interesting. If you ever go into an arcade and you play some pinball tables, they've all got a very strong theme. They'll be based on, you know, the latest movie. They'll be the, the Batman pinball machine. They'll be the, the a car racing pinball machine or an Indiana Jones one. Um, ugh, get out of there. Um, so they're always based, damn it, on a theme. So I thought, well, there we go, pinball, you know. We'll, well, that sucked. We'll, um, we'll make it based on evolution. So what is there on this table? Well, first of all, if you, um, well, part of it, unfortunately, I feel, like, might rely on too much knowledge of what, you know, is actually involved in evolution. And I think that's part of the problem with some of the entries and some of the judging that's going to take place, is people are like, oh, evolution, that just means, like, yeah, we'll just have a talent tree, or, you know, we'll change your character model or something like that from a fish into a frog. Well, sort of-ish. Um, the, the obvious feature on the, this map is the ramp there we go which leads you into an area called geographical isolation and one of the big things that tends to prompt evolution is just that geographical evolution because the thing is if you have like a very populated species of anything you have you know creature x and there's a lot of them and you know they're allowed to roam a, a wide area and interbreed with each other well things are, are generally going to stay relatively static they're not actually going to evolve because any freak mutations is mostly going to get like kind of washed out in the greater scheme of things. It's not really going to be much. Um, and so, well, it, it partially depends on, on specific variants of the, um, you know, the theory of evolution that you, you might look into, but it's the idea that um, a lot of evolution takes place when there's some sort of geographical divide, when you get, oh, a smaller sort of population sample because when you've got a smaller population random sort of changes and mutations and whatnot uh, and variances in a species is far more influential you know if you've only got 10 people then one person having a slightly different characteristic well that's that's a huge percentage um, so yeah so I have this area called geographic uh, isolation and then when you exit it and you go over this rollover and I don't know if you can see right over here these little rollovers there 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 and down here, these sort of like little wires that you can run over and it triggers things. Well, that lowers the gate over here to the breeding pit. And if you can get three of your balls into the breeding pit, um, then you can trigger multi-ball. The problem is that at some point during the development, and the problem with 48 hours, you don't get a lot of time for polish and game balance and everything. Like, you know, obviously the, the texturing and color, well, there's the texturing, the coloring is fine, but the texturing is very simple. And there simply wasn't enough time to really develop a lot of really good textures and also not you know anything in the way of decals or telling you where anything is but also not a whole lot of time to really perfect the game balance which was kind of unfortunate because um, due to the width of the play field and a normal pinball table would be quite a bit narrower you know something like this and like this or something something like that I don't know um, and you know the, the angles and the flippers would be a little different it might be easier to hit this multi ball or you would you, you put the, the ball lock a little further over to the left maybe over here and then it would be a lot easier to hit unfortunately at the angle that it's at it's a little difficult to hit the DNA is also very very hard to hit um, partially again because the, uh, the flipper angles got changed at some point um, the DNA is kind of interesting in theory you if you hit all three of the DNA targets then a DNA helix like a you know a double helix the standard you know what you visualize when you think of DNA the, the thingy the, the twisted ladder um, will appear somewhere on the map and you can pick it up for a lot of points but I actually don't think it's spawning right now um, which is too bad but it doesn't really matter because the DNA targets are actually too hard to hit it's almost impossible to actually get off the bonus which is too bad um, and so the DNA gives you lots of points. I think it also changes, no, the um, the ball color a little bit. So here's the thing, the ball spawns and it's green because I thought that was a good sort of 
like early creaturey color, um, you know, some sort of amoeba thingy. Um, but there are certain things, including the DNA, but also the uh, the multi ball, that will change the color. So when you proc the multi ball, what happens is, uh, there we go. Um, it, it spits out three balls at once, and all of a sudden you're, you're playing with three balls at the same time, which is kind of crazy. But the, the color of all the balls is based on the parent, but slightly changed. It'll be slightly more red, or slightly more yellow, or slightly more blue, that sort of thing. Um, actually, I just realized what it should be. is There should be one that's more red, more green, more blue, but oh well, anyway. Um, right now it's random what it is. Um, so these, these three balls come out and they're slightly different colors, and the last one standing and it becomes your new permanent ball color. And I've called that, that multi-ball uh, the survival of the fittest. Which is a, a phrase that's almost sort of misapplied to evolution. Um, it originally meant something kind of different, but it, it's kind of appropriate. So yeah, um, and that, that area is called the breeding pit. So you know, you can see this sort of evolution theme coming out. Uh, the little hold the ball there. Right over here, this purple target is called, is a mutagen. And that starts the uh, the spinning disc in the middle, the wheel of mutation, I call it internally. I don't call it that in, in the game itself, but, you know, it's the idea that we're, we're shaking things up. Um, there we are. Woo! Got another ball lock, which is good. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, the, the three um, rollovers at the top light up some lights. If you get all three lit up, it triggers the extinction event. And what that does is it turns on the lights over here on the out lanes. Um, and if you run over those, normally, I mean, you lose your ball. And you still lose your ball right now, but you get a tremendous number of bonus points to kind of take the edge off. Uh, I think that really what I should have done is turn these into an extra ball functionality. So if you go out through here, you get your ball back. You don't actually lose life. Um, and that's actually a tweak that I would like to do in the version that I might work on after the competition. Um, so again, you know, you only have 48 hours, and you can you can do some very rudimentary bug fixes if there's a big issue, uh, but generally speaking, you can't make any changes after that. And there's going to be three weeks of voting um, to determine who the uh, the winner is. There's no prize to the competition. Um, it's simply for bragging rights. Um, but you know, that's cool. Mostly, for me, it's an excuse to like get out and really program a game and finish a game because as, you know, I'm so, and this is a common trend, there's a lot of people who want to be game programmers but never get around to actually finishing a game. Well here I've got a firm deadline, 48 hours, obviously it's not going to be the world's greatest game. I mean, most games take 100 people 5 years to make these days. So it's really a, challenging, a challenge to make one. Yeah! In or five day or 48 hours but um there you go if you're curious this was made in unity 3d which is a wonderful game creation kind of framework that uh, handles a lot of the details for you um kind of lets you be creative it still requires that you uh you do programming oh i triggered the multi-ball survival of the fittest look at that so we got three balls, and they're all random colors. Turns out two of them are more or less yellow, and one of them is more or less the original green, but it's still there, so we will play with three at once! Ah! Oof, well, we've lost one already. And we've lost two. Awesome. Well, that was fast. I guess the uh, the yellow here, the yellowish green, is going to be the, uh, the fittest species. Actually earned a lot of points. Uh, a few things don't properly reset, I've realized, on... Um, on death. Um, and part of that is because some of my code wasn't generalized enough, and as a result, um, there's a few of those errors. And I've actually gone back and started putting in a lot of work reprogramming this to be a lot better, um, and a lot easier to work with, and easier to make new maps with. And I don't know if I'll have the time. I mean, I've got a day job, and you know, you guys kind of like it when I make video game videos. But if I can pull it off, I'm going to try to keep working on this a little bit. Um, it is open source, so if you guys want to take this code and make some changes, there's some options to do that somewhere. Um, or at least learn from it. It's not GPL or anything like that, but you could learn from this. But my goal, actually, assuming I had infinite time, is to, um, is to bring this game to like a really polished state with lots of different maps, but also an in-game map editor. Because... 
Well, actually, everything I do is, tends to be based on that. You know, community-created content is really big. The websites that I do tend to be like that. The, one, the ones that I've done that have been really successful have really... Whoa! I've never gotten a score that high. That's amazing. You do get a free life at 25,000 points, 50,000 points, and then every 50,000 points after that. Um, holy cow, man. And the game is very hard. Uh, due to a few, like, you know, changes along the way, plus I, I balanced the game a certain way, and then later I realized there was a bug in how we had uh, scored things and when I fixed the bug. So it's actually quite high to get extra, hard to get extra lives. Although, that's kind of true in real life, too. Like, this is a fairly decent simulation of the old school pinball machines that were designed to just eat your quarters mercilessly. Um, and really, I should have made something that was a little bit more casual friendly for the competition, but that's just the way the balance ended up. But yeah, so my goal is to, you know, it'd be nice to, to pull something off like that. I, I don't know if I would possibly have enough time. It's just so much going on already but I really enjoyed doing this and it really brought me back to um, the pinball machine that I used to play when I was a kid and the ones I still love to play in arcades and there really is a lot of technique to these things like even doing something like this like a ball trap that is a key technique you trap the ball and then you bring it down and mine's a little glitchy so it like kind of locks there for a sec but it allows you to slow the ball and then knock it away at exactly the right angle to do stuff um, and actually, I'm, I'm going to end this video here, but I'm about to look at another pinball game uh, tool called Future Pinball. So I, uh, I will see you in another video very shortly.